What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite guitars. Uh, this is actually the second guitar I ever bought. This is my Samic YR660. I purchased this thing brand new in 1992. Yes, I said 92. Uh, this had come out of the factory in October of 91. And Samic is a very, um, I don't know, elusive brand these days. It seems like you never hear about them, never see them anywhere, except for like low-end acoustics and stuff like that. Maybe they're just not that popular in America anymore. I don't really know. But at the time, uh, there was a small local guitar shop in my town that had a few of these in stock. And so I knew nothing about Samic. I'd never heard of them before, but I figured I'd try it and check it out. And uh, it turns out I loved the way it looked, felt, played, everything. So I picked it up and I got it for a steal too. Back then this thing cost only $300. Um, that's really cheap even in today's dollars. But I'm sure now if you went to buy something similar to this, specced out the way this is, it would easily be a thousand to 1500 bucks. Uh, it might be comparable to something more like an Ibanez AZ these days, who knows. So let's go over some of the specs real quick just to let you know what it's all about. It's an alder body. It's a maple, white maple neck, a rosewood fingerboard, and this thing weighs a ton. Uh, it clocks in at about 8.8 .8 to 8.9 pounds. So definitely heavy on your shoulder if you're gonna stand up and play with a strap you know, for a while. It's gonna really weigh on you. So I generally don't do that, but sometimes I do. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. It's got a very warm, bassier, focused sound you know if you want to call it the tone wood whatever but the way that this thing is built it just it tends to lean toward a bassy sound uh, so i definitely wanted to do some upgrades to this and a couple of years after i bought it i ended up swapping out the bridge and the pickups so let me tell you about those the original pickups were samic branded i have no idea who actually made them or how they sounded at this point it's been too many years but what i did is i swapped these out for demarzios I went with the Steve Vai Evolution and the Bridge. Uh, that's a brighter sounding pickup. It's not extremely bright, but it's pretty clear and crisp. And in some guitars, it can sound too shrill or too bright, but in this guitar, it sits perfectly. Uh, it gives it a nice, you know, equal tone. I like that a lot. And then for the middle and the neck position uh, pickups, I went with the Chopper for both, uh, the DiMarzio Chopper. It's got those blade pole pieces, if you want to call them pole pieces. Uh, I'll show some pictures up on the screen. You can't adjust them individually, but you know, I think the blade concept was like, basically the idea was that it would just pick up the resonance of the string vibrating better without going in and out, you know, fluctuating in uh, volume as the string vibrates. Uh, it does a good job. It sounds, they sound really good. So I like them a lot. I'm going to keep them in there. <laughs> As far as the bridge goes, it already had a Floyd licensed style bridge in it. Um, probably something similar to like a Floyd 1000 style bridge with the really high saddles and the fine tuners that kind of jut out and stick out too far. I really don't like that look. It, it always bothered me because it seems to get in the way when you want to do your palm mute. So if you're just strumming really heavily, you're hitting those things all the time. It was a pain in the butt. So I want to get rid of that. I ended up going with the Ibanez Low Pro 2 trim. However, that bridge wouldn't fit perfectly in the original slot, uh, the pocket of the guitar, so I had to have it routed out. I found a local guitar tech who was willing to do it, and he did a great job. Um, I forget who he was. I don't even know where he was at this point, but 
uh, routed it out really nicely, and it really looks pretty much stock, you know, it did a great job. Uh, it's, it's nice and flush, you know, it's recessed in there, and I just love it. This guitar stays in tune really well as long as you don't play with the whammy bar. As soon as you touch the whammy bar, though, uh, you're pretty much going to end up either sharp or flat, so you kind of have to just give it a little tug when you're done using it to kind of settle it back into tune. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, other than that, the neck is extremely stable. Uh, the truss rod in this thing, I've hardly ever had to adjust for whatever reason. Maybe it's because the neck is so thick or it's because it's a one-piece maple style. I don't know. But this truss rod never, ever needs adjustment. I don't know what it is. Uh, I did recently, within the last few months, take it to my tech to have the frets recrowned and filed down a little bit because there was a little unevenness. They were starting to get dented up. You know how nickel frets are. They just, they wear out after a while and you got to have them kind of re-leveled and recrowned. That's just, that's the name of the game. You got to do it. It's, you know, downside of owning nickel uh, silver frets. But now this thing has really low action and it plays extremely fast and re very well. And uh, what else can I say about this guitar? It is just a solid stable in my arsenal. I'm, I will never get rid of this thing. It's a lot of fun to play. It's got some, you know, pretty little cutaways there that aren't really functional, but they look nice. You know, it's cool. It's your dual cutaway style. And considering this was made in 1992, it's really interesting to see the heel joint is kind of uh, sloped down. You know, it's kind of, it's got that comfort heel kind of. It's almost like a precursor to what Ibanez was doing eventually when they went with their gems, which had the very low profile, curved, smooth uh, heel pocket there. It's kind of on that same vein. So you can really get into the 24th fret, no problem at all. I mean, that thing is very clean. Again, 1991, so that was 30 years ago that this guitar was built and they were doing it back then. <laughs> Samick, I don't know what happened to this brand. I mean, I don't see them anywhere, really, honestly. You never hear about them. Nobody's playing them. And I don't know how their quality is nowadays, but this thing, quality is top-notch. It's just really solid. It's a great guitar to play. Locking nut, angled headstock, you know. They're Samick branded tuners, but they work really well. There was no reason to replace them. And I kind of thought to myself, do I want to bother putting on locking tuners, but you've got the locking nuts, so what's the point, you know? Yeah, and that's all I can say about that, man. This thing is just great. But I replaced the knobs. I went with the uh, Fender-style skirt knobs in black, and then uh, replaced the bridge, replaced the pickups. Let me show you why I love this bridge so much, too. The arm pops out. I much prefer this over the arms that you have to screw down and then they never stay tight or they're too tight. Pain in the butt, right? This thing snaps into place, snaps and locks, pop and lock. From 90, I think it was from 89 or 90, up until 91, they were doing the pointed headstock. After that year, 92 and beyond, they went to that rounded off, oversized hockey stick looking uh, headstock, which I can't stand. I hate that look. It's the same headstock basically that you see on those Kramers. This is very small, proportionate, and it looks more like, you know, an Ibanez, which I really love. I love their headstocks. It kind of looks like that. Also, Samick seems to change their logo like every other year. I have no idea why. You know, maybe just corporate decision, they decided to change the logo. But for this particular year, they had what's known as the Wave logo, because it's got that little wave icon next to the word Samick. Looks great. This was manufactured in Korea not Indonesia. So Korea back then was doing a really good job apparently making guitars because this thing is, it's flawless as far as I can tell. Um, I've never seen any kind of issue with the finish. You know, fit and finish has always been perfect. This neck has never been taken out of this pocket as far as I can tell. Um, this thing plays like a dream. I wish you guys could just play this thing in person. I, you know. <laughs>
So from what I can tell from the information I found online, uh, Samic is a company based in Seoul, South Korea, and they must not be sending a lot of guitars to the U.S. because I really rarely ever see them anywhere. And Samic seems to be an umbrella company that encases several different guitar makers and piano makers alike. Um, they have the Greg Bennett or Greg Bennett brand. They've got uh, Samic Guitar Works. They apparently own Silvertone, which I have heard of, and a few others. But for the most part, yeah, they're tough to come by. So, I mean, if you can find one and you like the way they look, check them out, definitely. It's pretty cool. Like I said, I picked this up 30 years ago, and I'm glad I did. I've yet to find a guitar exactly the same as mine. Uh, in other words, with the same inlay, the same pickup configuration, the same bridge, the same headstock and logo. It's really weird. It's like for one year they made this exact model and then they kind of, you know, started changing stuff after that or and previous to that. So I found other ones that appeared to be from the same year. They might have the same pickup configuration, but the inlays are different. They're not the shark tooth so much. They're either like a diamond. I mean, excuse me. They're either like a, like a, just like a regular triangle or there's some other shape, or they're like a check mark, which is really odd. So it seems like they kept, you know, changing it up. I don't know, all the time, or I don't know how often, but it seemed like they were changing up the look of it a lot. Um, I can't find this color either anywhere. If I ever find this same guitar in other colors, like they, they offered it in red, a white, there was a some kind of a sunburst color, uh, and then I think there was also like a gold, goldish yellow color, I would love to find one of those and pick one of those up. So if you find one used somewhere, you know, go check it out, man. You might have uh, a pretty, pretty cool guitar in your hands. But like I said, you know, it's a good modding platform too because it's not like it's some kind of a classic that you don't want to mess with. I mean, definitely swap out stuff. You know, put in what you want to, what you want to have. I wanted better pickups, put them in. I wanted a lower profile bridge, got one and fit it. You know, made it work. So. Yeah, guys, Samic, I don't know, they're still out there. Apparently, the, according to their website, they're one of the biggest guitar manufacturers in the world. So they must be selling in other countries in Europe and Asia and stuff, and we're just not even aware of it over here, what's going on with that. But I don't know why. They're missing out on a huge bit of the market. You know, they definitely could compete. Um, I've seen a couple of models on their website. It gives no description of what the components are, what they're made out of, the specs, nothing. It just basically shows you a few photos. Uh, one of the models in particular that looks really cool, and I would love to find out more about it or find out where I could get it or find out what it costs, is the SS300. Uh, so look that up if you want to. Samic SS300. Maybe you'll find a couple pictures online. Uh, it looks pretty pretty minor. It's got a set, it's got a neck through design. It's got a very similar headstock. They stuck with this logo because that looks badass. And it is... Uh, it looks like it's specked out pretty good. It's got some kind of a floating trim. I think it's a Floyd Rose, but that would be cool to find one of those. Uh, otherwise, I don't know. I've got this one. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's awesome. I'll give you a close-up shot of the back just so you can see um, what we're working with here. I'm trying to get the light. I'm trying to give you a shot where you don't get the reflection from the gloss finish. But here, check this out too. Look at that. And I'm going to try to show you the, uh, the angle they put on it there. See that? That's pretty much ahead of its time, I would say, for back then. I mean, 30 years ago, they were thinking about that stuff, you know, when everyone else was doing the thick brick block, square block heel joint. That's pretty nice. It seems to me that Samick's missing out on a huge market share here in the U.S. because we're huge consumers of guitar, guitar-related stuff. Um, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what the thought process is, but it's South Korea, not North, so it's not like we can't, you know, trade with them. I don't know what the deal is. So that pretty much wraps it up for today, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I had a good time, and I hope you did too, checking out this Samick guitar. 
Uh, it's one of my favorites, one of my oldest, and I really love it. I don't know why I haven't played it more, more on the channel for you guys. So I definitely will make a change and make sure I get it out there a little more frequently. Um, so that's it for now, guys. You know, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Also getting crunched up. <laughs>